Many believe life as we know it has changed irrevocably, and that in this seismic shift lies an opportunity to turn things around, improve our world, and make life better for the majority, especially in poor countries. It is time to reboot Nigeria. This is Pivotal. <music> In a matter of days, the ruling party, the All Progressives Congress, the APC, will be choosing the candidate that they will present to Nigeria for the 2023 elections in their bid to remain in charge of the country. The candidate will go head to head with the flag bearer of the main opposition People's Democratic Party, the PDP, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, a former vice president of Nigeria, and other candidates from other opposition parties, including the Labour Party, which is fielding former Anambra state governor. Peter Obi. But it's not just the presidential seat which is up for grabs in the general elections, which are scheduled for February next year. Also in contention are gubernatorial seats for 30 states across the federation and national and state assembly seats. These elections are coming at a time when Nigeria is grappling with multiple challenges, which might even be called existential. A decade plus war against Boko Haram terrorists in northwest Nigeria has wrecked the region and is now spilling into the neighboring Northwest and North Central regions, which have also been grappling for years with harder farmer clashes and low level ethno religious conflicts. Add to this mix high level criminality of armed gangs who kidnap people for ransom and a secessionist movement in the Southeast, which has spiraled into an orgy of violence and killings. And it is clear that Nigeria is not in a good place. So do these forthcoming elections represent an opportunity to elect those who can turn this country around? And what indeed should be the quality of leaders we should be looking to elect? Does the current system enable the emergence of these sorts of people? These are some of the questions we hope to answer today on Pivotal. My guests are former Senator and member of the ruling party from Adamawa State, Binta Masi Garba. Also here with me in the studio, Pastor Itua Igodalo, the founder and senior pastor of Trinity House Church, Lagos. And finally, Mr. Zil Akaraiwe, a financial advisory executive who is also a radio host and a columnist that is a respected commentator on national affairs. Lady and gentlemen, welcome to Pivotal. Thanks for having us. Uh, thank you. Um, let me start, if I can, with the pastor. Um, in your opinion, thank Pastor you very Gallo, much. do these thank elections you. represent a real opportunity for Nigeria to turn things around or not? Well, you can see from where we are, especially with the two uh, major parties, let me call them major parties, the APC and the PDP, we do not have much of a choice in terms of the leadership choices they have presented to us. The gentleman that has emerged from the PDP, uh, Alaji Atiku Abubaka, has been there for years, since Obasanjo's time. So he's not anyone new, he's not anybody fresh. Uh, whether or not he's the kind of leader we want in Nigeria is debatable. Um, some are for him, a lot are against him, including his former boss, Olusha Obasanjo himself. So that's one choice. So that's not new leadership. That's not fresh thinking. Uh, with the APC, we don't know where they're going yet. But then the beauty parade, they have also presented to us. 90% of them are old people that have been part of this government, been in this government, been part of the failure, or if you want, the success of this government. If it's left to the APC or the PDP, I don't think we're really going to get anything specifically new uh, from them. A lot of the people that have been presented, we all know them. We know largely their backgrounds. We know what they have achieved, and we know what they're capable of. Uh, Let me bring in Mr. Z, Akarai way, right? Um, yes. I mean, Mr. Um, Pastor Igodalo doesn't sound very hopeful based on the parade, the beauty parade, he says, of sort of people who've, who sort of um, are the potential candidates going forward. Um, let me start maybe by asking you, in your view, what are the sort of qualities that we need in leaders that will have 
a chance of turning Nigeria around um, as we sort of look at these elections? What are the qualities we should be looking for? In, in terms of the leadership, uh, um, the qualities are they, are, they are not many, to be honest, for where we are as a nation. So number one, I'll be looking for a leader or leaders who have vision. And it's not just vision. It has to be some audacious vision. Um, for example, if you look at the past sector, I'm not looking for a leader that is going to be aiming for 20 or 30,000 megawatts. You have China aiming for an additional 800,000 megawatts over the next five years. So if I'm looking for leadership, I'm looking for audacious, visionary leadership. I'm also looking for leadership that has empathy. People that understand how the common man feels and exists. And I don't use the word suffer, but how we exist, not even we here, but the common man. Someone that has empathy that can drive development in the direction of human dignity for the average Nigerian. Um, I'm also looking for um, leaders who have what I call, the, what is called the third order thinking. People, not just people that react, people that sit down, they plan, they are visionaries, they are able to see the consequences of their actions. They are able to apply patience, discipline, and empathy to the decisions they make for the country. I'm looking for leaders that are willing to make personal sacrifice for the development of the country, irrespective of whether they are liked or not. And I need leaders that are bold, bold enough to do certain things, not to please people, but to do what is appropriate and necessary for the development of the nation. So in summary, those are the kind of leaders I'm looking for, not just at the presidential level, but at the State House of Assembly, the National Assembly, and the governorship. Now, um, Senator Binta Masi, often it is said that, um, uh, you know, Nigerian civilians, i.e. people like Pastor Igodalo and uh, Akarawe, <laughs> find it um, easy to sit and yes. talk about these things. Um, but you've sort of been in the trenches, you've been in government, you've been in the National Assembly uh, as a representative, and you were also in the Senate. And you've also just come out of um, a primary in which you were trying to um, get back to your Senate seat. So let me ask you the first question I asked Pastor Egodalo. Do you believe that these forthcoming elections actually represent an opportunity to get it right? And if so, is your experience of the system likely to throw up the kind of leaders that we heard are needed for Nigeria to be turned around? In your view? Well, I, I think we as Nigerians, we need to define what we want in a leader. We as a person or as an individual must look for the kind of uh, uh, reflections that we want in a leader. Either APC or PDP, just like what the pastor said, is the same crop of people in and out. But when the president Buhari came on board, a lot of people were very, very not comfortable with him, thinking that ah, the presence is going to be filled with people because of corruption here and there. But again, even I said, who is a leader or what kind of a quality do we need from a leader? That it has to trickle down even to the common man out there. Let me let me ask you to clarify that statement. Are you confirming here and now that you do not think that the current politics and electoral processes we have in place will enable us elect the right kind of people at different levels of leadership in this country. Is that what you're saying based yeah, on your yeah, experience? Yeah. Based on my experience, we are not ready for quality leaders, either from the state, local or the federal, because of the kind of politics that has been played. But like I said earlier on, if we as Nigerian or as an individual, what kind of uh, quality leaders or leadership do you try to get out of a person that you elect as a leader? Because our attitude will define the kind of leaders that we're going to have in the, I mean, in the mere future. Okay. But again, for us, and, and, and I will come back to the two gentlemen, but maybe because you're the only one with experience in government, I thought maybe we could get you to help us so that we actually hone in on what the specific issues are. Because often when we talk about politics in the Nigerian context, there's a sort of general 
the generalization about the things that are going wrong. Are you able to talk to us specifically about what the things that all went wrong with your own election so that we could use that to sort of try and see if we can discuss the general problems with our electoral processes? It's, it's, in the, it's in the domain that we went into election, about six of us, two declined. Because when the first election to, con I mean, for the House of Assembly came on board, you can imagine delegates are asking for 1.7 million naira just to get their vote. And when it came to us, somebody is giving 2 million naira for a vote. And the question I ask, I have been there and I have done what is expected of me as a legislator. I have brought in federal presence to my senatorial district. And someone looked at me straight in my eyes and said, if you don't add another 500, we're not going to get you the vote. And I said, if the leadership, I mean, the leadership that I have done before is not been as approved and uh, applauded, then I don't think I am... I mean, I'm that in that position to give out such quantum of money for me to be your representative. But I was thinking that when somebody has been there before, you have done what is expected of you as a, as a legislator. And I thought uh, the previous activities will have been the one that will sell you out for the people. The general public are interested in Binta, but when you have just less than 300 people that will now have to vote a, a senator, and they are asking you for 2.5 million, then obviously you won't get the right people in the right job. Pastor uh, so Igodalo, we've just, you know, got confirmation of, you know, what has been in the sort of public domain and has been discussed back and forth about how essentially party delegates sell their votes. And the problem for Nigeria, I think, has often been that by the time we get to elections where we can, you know, exercise our democratic right, often the problems within political parties, this issue of party politics and a whole bunch of other things mean that we don't necessarily end up with the quality of candidates that um, you know, are good for Nigeria. In, in your view, is there any way within the current system to rescue this particular issue and get us quality leaders? Or is it a question of really, we, we, this system is irredeemable? and we have to collapse it and build something else? Or what do you think? Because, you know, we are just a few months now to elections and we're hearing these shenanigans that have happened with delegates. Well, the party system that we are operating right now, where the, a small group of people are dominating and controlling the affairs of the entire nation simply cannot work, especially in the Nigerian context. Uh, first of all, you don't have parties in the sense of a party. What you have are platforms where people present themselves to run for office and try to dominate the environment. Secondly, we might be best to return back to the parliamentary system where everybody went and spoke to the general public and offered themselves to represent them and go into the parliament. And from the parliament, you then choose who you want to be the prime minister of that parliament. Okay, and that might be what may uh, best suit Nigeria, make the process less expensive and make it more focused on getting the wishes of at least a certain section of the people. And then thirdly, maybe you want to get rid of the party system and let people run as independent candidates, uh, which will work in the parliamentary system. And therefore, you do your best within your competences and you go forward. But what is most critical is a massive education of the majority of Nigerians to let them know good from bad, right from wrong, what is in their own best interest. The level of illiteracy is phenomenal and people simply don't care uh, because they don't know and they cannot relate bad governance to their own situation. We need to change the whole thing completely. Okay, we're going to have to take a quick break. When we come back, we focus a little bit more on the suggestions made by Pastor Igodalo about changing the Nigerian political system. We will ask whether that is actually realistic or if there are things that can be done within what already exists to make our situation better. Don't go away. <music> Welcome back to Pivotal, where I'm in conversation with Senator Binta Masi, Pastor Ito Igodalo, and Mr. Zil Akaraiwi. 
Now, Mr. Akara, you were realistically given that we're asking people who are benefiting from this system to reform the system. And we saw a constitutional amendment happen. We've seen, you know, proposals on restructuring, none of which, you know, went very far. How realistic is it that we can expect that the current crop of political leaders will enable the sort of changes that Pastor Igodalo is asking for? And if it isn't realistic, do you feel we, in your view that there are still things that we can do using the existing system to mitigate some of the problems that we see with internal party democracy, which again and again gives us, gives us people who don't have the qualities that we need um, for leadership? It depends, it really depends. Um, I, I agree entirely with what Pastor Itua has said um, regarding the fact that what we have cannot take us to where we ought to be. But there's a reason in my opinion for that. And the reason is, we call what we have a democracy, but it is not. The only characteristic that what we have has in common with a democracy is that we vote. And you know, of all the 10 or 12 key characteristics of a democracy, voting is just one of them. What we actually have, Kadara, is an electocracy, a system where people, voting leaders, but the people have no say in the governance decisions until those people leave, which means that there is no accountability. And one of the pivotal pillars in a democracy is accountability to the people. Now, what we have, we don't have leadership. We don't have elected leaders that are accountable to the people. One, they get in there for four years, that's it. They don't talk to you, you don't hear from them. I mean, talking majority of them until another four years. What we run is an electocracy. And to change an electocracy, you have to take power from the people that already have it. And the way to take it is the way Pastor Etua has said, you need mass to massively educate the people so that they can decide for themselves that this is not what we want. And that's the only way the politicians will change anything. But as long as majority of Nigerians are ill-educated or illiterate, then what's going to happen is the politicians will keep riding on those people's votes to stay in power. It's not easy for the people benefiting from the dysfunction of a system to fix the system. And, and, and I hear you loud and clear. Um, and that seems to be sort of a general consensus among most analysts that you speak to. But what does this actually mean for Nigeria, Senator Binta? Because at the start of this program, I listed some of the major crises that our country is facing. And every analyst agrees that actually this crisis have the potential to sort of totally wreck the country. We're already sort of on our knees, almost comatose. And so if what the consensus that is emerging from the three of you here is that these elections that are coming are not likely to make any difference. So what does this mean for Nigeria then in your view, um, Senator Binta? Or as a politician, do you actually think there is a sort of pragmatic way to deal with this and end up perhaps with something that is not as bad as what we had? Oh, well, the PDP yeah. has produced their flag bearer, which is um, uh, Atiku Abubakar. He has been in the, um, the foyer of governance before now, uh, acted as a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He is from the northeastern part of Nigeria, where it was ravaged by the Boko Haram. My senatorial district, too, was ravaged by Boko Haram. We've seen uh, he has been um, a kind of a technocrat to a large extent. He has been administrator. So to me, probably he must have seen the other side of politics and which I strongly believe he must have tried in his own effort when he was in government to bring about uh, true democracy. And he has fought on that. We're waiting to see who the APC will bring in as their flag bearer. But again, like I said over and over, we have a problem and the problem is, is within us. The elites are somewhere watching the pharaoh, allowing the commoners, the illiterate, to be the one in the forefront of driving I mean, our political uh, activities. And until the elites now get in themselves involved in politics, 
and trying to right the wrong that we have found ourselves in, then definitely we will come into a kind of a crossroad. Pastor Igodalo, I, I, I hear what um, uh, Senator Binta is saying, talking about being patriotic Nigerians. And I think all of us here, the four of us by and large, sort of have a certain belief in Nigeria is where, why we are still here, why we do what we do. But when these conversations happen, what is frustrating for observers that are non-Nigerians or for regular people who believe like we are a little bit privileged, we have platforms that they don't have, is that there's a lot of talking. Is it time to give up on Nigeria and actually accept that maybe she can't be fixed? I, I don't think so. Um, I, I, I use myself as an example. Um, and I think over the last 20 years, I've become a lot more politically aware, politically savvy, uh, more interested. As long as the elite, the ones who know better, are more interested in themselves and they're not ready to sacrifice, he said, and be sincere and work at it. Nigeria might be a lost cause, but I think there's enough elite pe uh, people who are interested in Nigeria and willing to step in. And I think because of those people, uh, things will change. Mr. Akarawe, given the issues that we've discussed, including you know what uh, Senator Binta Masi pointed out that literally every you know region of Nigeria is facing some issue or the other, and all of them major issues. Um, are you hopeful that um, things can still be done to salvage this federation or are, have we run out of time? There are many of us who, when we look at sort of the level of banditry, the kidnapping, the killings happening in the northeast, north central, northwest, who, to be honest, are finding it difficult to find hope. Yes. Um, depends on what time frame you're looking at. Do I think that things are going to change in Nigeria over the next 12 to 18 months, 24 months? No, I don't. I, I honestly don't. But when I think about Nigeria and the development of Nigeria, I think in generations. I think that is, is maybe, that a realistic way to think, given that um, there's an unraveling taking place, and of course, you know, one of the big issues is we do have secessionists who who say the union isn't working, and we should be thinking about giving regions their own republic. Of course, the most um, well-known and notorious um, group fighting for secession right now is IPOP. But, you know, we've heard of Yoruba Nation. We've heard about people in the middle belt saying that they want a middle belt country, et cetera, et cetera. I even heard about Iowa Republic. So is that yes, a realistic, so is it realistic to think about Nigeria generationally? Yes, it is. No, all these secessionists are saying the same thing. They are expressing their distrust for the government by saying we want to secede. All they are asking for is equity and justice, but they do not believe they can get equity and justice from the center. And so they say, we will do it ourselves. If they see equity and justice from the center, there'll be no need to talk about secession. Now, what I'm saying is this country, I've been looking at Nigeria. If you look at Nigeria from a data perspective, any metric you like, but look at it in 20 year jumps say 1960 to 1980, 1980 to 2000, 2000 to 2020, you, and that's roughly a generation, yes, you will see a very steady decline. Now, there hasn't been any concerted effort to address the issues causing the decline to reverse it. So what I think is gonna happen is all the banditry, all the chaos in every single state and region in the country is going to eventually come to the doorstep of the decision makers. And they are then going to be forced, if for nothing else, for selfish reasons. Now, do we want to wait for that? I think we should not. I think that we can have an intellectual or mind revolution where what Pastor H was said and what Senator Binta said is, let the elite that know better, who are very few, come together and put pressure on the elected people to take the decisions that are best for the nation as a whole. Senator Binta Masigarba, thank you so much for joining me on Pivotal, Pastor Itua Igodalo, and Mr. Zil Akarawe. Thank you so much for joining us on Pivotal. And that's it for this edition of the program. Join us again next month when we'll be discussing another topical issue. Have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm.